Meantime, several NATO states are threatening action against Syria, with the UN Security Council set to hold an emergency meeting on the situation. It comes as residents of the city of Hama report that the armies resumed shelling residential areas there. More than 100 people are said to have been killed on Sunday when government tanks forced their way into the opposition stronghold. Russia's condemned the violence in Syria, calling on both sides, the government and the opposition, to abstain from brutality and abide by the law. Meantime, the EU is expanding sanctions on Damascus. Let's try and round all this up. Talk uh, to Professor Joshua Landis. He's from the Centre for Mid-East Studies at the University of Oklahoma. Thanks for being with us, Professor. Much appreciated. So Good serious pleasure. forces are continuing to crack down on the people despite government promises of reform and change. Why? Well, Hama, which is the centre of this crackdown, uh, came left government control about three weeks ago. The government, the governor who allowed, who called off the troops and, and withdrew security from the town, um, was summarily f fired. And the government realized that this was a big mistake. And, and what happened now, it's the last three weeks, Hama has been out of government control. And in, as Ramadan comes, and the opposition said that every day would be Friday, we, um, the, the government is clearly trying to take control of Hama and doesn't want it to become a site where per, perhaps a new military could grow up, a free Syria military, or a new political order. Can the UN offer anything here? It's set to, uh, to meet for an emergency session on Syria. Do you think the Security Council may have some sort of solution to offer an end to the violence in Hama and elsewhere? Well, uh, it's not clear. and and. As you undoubtedly know, your viewers know, Russia has been key in uh, vetoing efforts by the United States, Britain, and Germany to come up with stronger language and stronger actions against Syria. And, and Russia has said, we do not want to have happen in Libya uh, again in Syria. And so, so that, has, that has not happened. On the other hand, Russia made some pretty strong statements today about Syria's need to, uh, to stop shooting. Mm. Is it now a time, a case for the same sort of action as we saw in Libya to be happening in Syria? Maybe a NATO-led coalition going in, despite what you're saying there about what Russia wants? Well, uh, you know, it's not clear to me. All of the Syrian opposition leaders who have met and, and elected executive committees have all demanded that there be no foreign intervention. Now, of course, foreign intervention is a very broad and gray area. There is military intervention like Libya, but there's also an economic, uh, greater economic uh, strangulation of the country, which could come along. The United States already has sanctions, fairly severe sanctions on Syria, but Europe does not. And well, the EU's uh, just extended its sanctions, it has just extended them, hasn't it? I mean, will that make any difference well, to it's uh, President extended Assad? Them to individuals. It's extended them to, to govern government, top government officials. That means if they have money in the U.S., it can be frozen. Well, it's obviously this, done it because it thinks it can carry some weight. So do you think President well, Assad sure will, that's, will that's heed true. that? Uh, you know, look, it, it, maybe it carries a little bit of weight, but it's largely being done for domestic reasons because the West feels it needs to do something. It doesn't want to stop trade. You know, we've tried sanctions in Iraq, in Iran, Libya, they haven't worked very much. And when they have worked, they've starved the people and not the government. And that's the danger of sanctions. It, they, they feel good because you feel like you're doing something and you can tell the opposition you're on their side. But they, in fact, they often hurt uh, the people you don't want to hurt. Professor, you talked about the people there being affected in Syria. What about the, the, the wider ramifications here? If this goes on, how could it uh, af affect the wider world? Well, you know, this is more disruption in the Middle East. And obviously, Saudi Arabia feels threatened by, uh, by the whole Arab Spring and has been trying to stop it. Uh, it could help destabilize Iran, I mean, Iraq, excuse me, uh, uh, or Lebanon. Turkey doesn't like it because there have been refugees. And the fear is if, if Syria slips towards civil war, there would be a lot more refugees. So clearly, this, this uh, challenges all of the neighbors of Syria. On the other hand, military intervention, economic sanctions may do no good either. It, can the world stop Syria from going through this, these convulsions? I'm not sure it can. 
OK, Professor Joshua Landis, thanks for your expert opinion there from the Centre for Midi Studies at the University of Oklahoma. Good to have you on the